In this video, I'm going to show you the Facebook retargeting ad that we used to double sales for a client's online course launch. So we were doing regular launches for this client. And when we added this one middle of funnel ad to our Facebook advertising campaigns, it literally resulted in people being twice as likely to purchase if they had clicked or engaged with these particular ads. The best part about them is they are really cheap to implement because they're in the middle of the funnel and it's really simple to do. So it's become a no brainer for us now. It's something that we add into every launch or every limited time offer that we have because it is that effective. So stay tuned and I'll show you what these ads are, how to create them, and make sure you stick around to the end because I'm going to go over the exact details of how we actually set them up inside the ad manager. And there are a few really important things there that you need to make sure you get right in terms of setup to make sure these work effectively. In case you're new to the channel, my name's Andrew Hubbard. I'm the founder of Hubbard Digital. So we're a Facebook and Instagram advertising agency and education company. And we focus on helping online course creators, coaches, consultants, and membership site owners grow their businesses using paid traffic. Now let's start by talking about exactly what these ads are. But before we do, if you enjoy this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel out a lot. And if you want to hear more from me, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit that little bell so you get notified whenever I release a new video or go live on YouTube. Okay, so these sales doubling retargeting ads are a middle of funnel ad. So that means that we generally use them after somebody opts in to our email list or becomes a lead. So as soon as somebody joins the email list, people start seeing these ads. Though you can also use them for all warm audiences, like people who have visited your website, who have engaged with you on Facebook and Instagram, people who've watched videos on Facebook and things like that as well. So we really mainly use them after people become leads, but you can use them for your other warm audiences as well. So the purpose of these ads is to build trust and credibility and to establish yourself as an authority in your industry. So you want to establish yourself as someone they can just go to and know that they're listening to the right person to solve their particular problems. And the reason that these work so well is because when people first find you on Facebook or Instagram, they're naturally skeptical. And that's, I mean, think about it. That's totally normal, right? If you just see somebody in an ad for the first time and you click that ad, you're not instantly going to have full trust in that person. You're not going to be willing to hand over your credit card details 10 seconds later. You're going to be looking for indicators that you can trust this person, that you, they are an authority. And that's what these ads do. They put those trust and authority indicators out there in front of people so that it builds that trust quicker. So here's exactly what we're doing here. So whenever somebody becomes a lead, so let's say they register for a webinar or they download a PDF or a checklist or a cheat sheet, maybe they book a call with our sales team, right? Whatever it is that becoming a lead means to you, that's where we want to start showing these ads. And we keep running these ads all the way until the particular offer is expired. So in this case, we were doing a course launch and the launch window or enrollment period was only open for a certain period of time. So as soon as enrollment closed, we stopped these ads. Now, what we're showing them in this time are ads that link out to blog features. So when they've been featured on major websites and publications, we link out to podcast interviews that the person has been in and also media features. So we're linking out and showing this content that establishes credibility. So let's say you've been on major podcasts in your industry. What you would do is run ads to those podcast interviews that you did on those big podcasts because people already know, like, and trust those podcasts. If they see that you've been on there, they know you're legit. So that's the purpose here. Same if you've been in the media, let's say you've been featured in Forbes or Inc or a magazine like that, then you would link out to those articles with these ads. And let's say you've got four, five, six of these different features that you're showing in your ads and you've got six different ads. What that creates is a situation where somebody sees you for the first time and they opt in, they become a lead. And then all of a sudden you appear everywhere to them. They're seeing you on Facebook with an article in Forbes. They're seeing an ad for you on Instagram with a podcast interview on one of the most recognized podcasts in your particular industry. Next thing they're seeing you, you know, pop up somewhere else with a link out to another piece uh, on a credible website. 
it makes it seem like you are everywhere all of a sudden. And so they start to think, hey, this this guy or girl is the real deal. Like they start to realize that you are actually an expert and they start to sort of develop that feeling of trust and they start to view you as the authority that you are. So you're probably thinking, what type of content should I use? It's best if you have features on websites and things that are not guest posts. So if it's content where they're quoting you or where they've written about you or your business or you've contributed in some way, that's fantastic. If it's a guest post that you've written, still okay, but it's not ideal. If you've got those features where they're either quoting you or talking about you, that is the best uh, type of, of stuff to use here in terms of articles. Otherwise, if you've done guest posts and you don't have anything else, use the guest posts. Now, in terms of podcasts, they are fantastic. If you've done a few podcast interviews, fantastic, use those. If you haven't, and if you don't have any features on big websites, podcasts are probably the easiest way to go. So if you're thinking, I don't have any of this, how can I use this? Pitch some podcasts and do a few interviews on different podcasts and use those. They're relatively easy to get into if you're an authority or if you're somebody that's you know really knows their stuff in the industry. Um, you just need to reach out and pitch those podcasts. They won't come to you. We can do a separate video on that. I'm not going to cover that now. But you need to reach out. You need to make yourself known. You need to pitch these people and get on podcasts and you can use it that way. And of course, that third piece, it's probably the most difficult to get, but if you've got it, it's fantastic, are media features. So again, I mentioned things like, like I would use my feature in money uh, or social media examiner or entrepreneur and stuff like that. So if you've got those, definitely use them. And then the next step is to use a tool called Pixelme to actually create a short link. Now what Pixelme does, it's a fantastic little tool that allows you to create links that pixel people, even if they don't, go to your website. So usually you can only install the Facebook pixel on your own website. And if you're linking out to websites that somebody else owns, in this case, podcasts and uh, media features and other blogs, you normally can't pixel them, meaning you can't retarget them based on the, that action. But if you use Pixelme, you can do that. Basically, you create a short link, they click on that link, it pixels them on their way through to that website. So that's the first thing you want to do. Take the URL from the media feature or the article or the podcast that you want to send people to, put it into Pixelme. So you just create a new link, drop in the full URL, select the Facebook pixel that you want to use and click create link and it will give you a nice short link that you can use. Next, you want to go over to the Facebook ad manager and create a new campaign with the reach objective. Once you create that campaign, you want to go down to the ad set level. And at the ad set level, we're just going to set up our targeting, our end date and a couple of other quick things. So in terms of targeting, we want to create a custom audience that contains everybody who has become a lead. So in this case, I'm going to choose everybody who's hit the thank you page that they see after opting in to my freebie for the launch. So we'll say a webinar in this case. So everyone who's opted in to my webinar that's going to be live in the last 30 days. So once they sign up for the webinar, they hit this thank you page. I'm going to use that to create my custom audience so that everyone who's registered for the webinar in the last 30 days is in this audience. And that's what I'm going to target. Now, don't forget, just make sure you exclude your existing customers if you need to do that. So if this is an online course like what we were selling, then people are only going to buy that once most likely. So I'm going to exclude all of our past customers. And then for the end date, we're just going to set the date for when your promotion ends. So in this case, uh, we're doing a launch. And so the launch ends and enrollment closes on a particular date. So that's when we want to stop showing these ads. Now, you're going to have all of your other ads running in between at the same time and all that kind of stuff during a launch. You're going to have lots of retargeting ads going on. That's fine. These just run in parallel with all of those. The last thing you really want to do at the ad set level is go all the way to the bottom and you'll see you can set a frequency cap. This allows you to tell Facebook how often you want each person in your audience to see your ad per day. So we just want to set this so that everybody sees our ad twice per day. So each person will see two ads per one day. Now, don't worry, you're probably thinking I don't want them seeing the same ad twice a day, that's annoying. That won't happen because what we're going to do is put multiple ads inside the one ad set. 
So you'll have four, five, six, maybe more ads inside this ad set. And so they're going to see a variety of different ads over the course of the campaign. They're not necessarily going to see the same ad over and over and over. It will be a mix. All right, next you want to go down to the ad level and set up your actual ad creatives. So this is all pretty standard. The only thing that is different in this is you want to make sure you click the add a website URL button. So it allows you to put a link in the ad. And then, so go ahead and do that and make sure you use your pixel me links in both the copy and in the website URL so that you are pixeling people on the way through. And then just go ahead and set up your ad like usual. Put in your image or video, some copy. I normally keep the copy quite brief. Um, tell them what it is that they're going to get or learn from it and then send them over to whatever the thing is. Lastly, just make sure you scroll down to the bottom and check that you've uh, ticked that little checkbox to enable the Facebook pixel there. For some reason with reach ads, that's usually turned off by default. So just check it, uh, make sure that's done and you should be good to go. So once you've done that and you'll have your campaign, your ad set, and you'll have a bunch of different ads inside that ad set. So you'd set up a different ad for each different feature or podcast or whatever you've got. The timeline simply looks like this. Somebody opts into your freebie for the launch. So in this case, we're using a webinar as the example and it's a live webinar. So somebody might opt in four days before the live webinar happens. Then they start seeing these authority building ads and they keep seeing them every day. They turn up to the webinar, see that, they keep seeing those ads for the next few days and they're thinking, hey, should I buy this product? You know, blah, blah, blah. They keep seeing you all over the place and hopefully by the time the car closes, they've decided, yep, this is somebody I want to learn from. I know this person knows their stuff. I can see, you know, they, they seem to be everywhere. I'm going to buy from them. That's the, that's hopefully the goal and what happens with these ads. And as I said, we actually have found like through the data, people who click these ads, engage with these ads twice as likely to buy. And it's literally helped us double sales in launches with our Facebook ad strategies just by adding this one ad in. That was the only differentiator. Our conversion rate just took a massive leap when we started adding these into launches. So I highly encourage that you check it out. All right, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know that you like the content and it really does help the channel. So I really, really do appreciate that. And if you wanna hear more from me, don't forget, hit that subscribe button, hit the little bell. You'll get notified whenever I release a new video on Facebook and Instagram advertising for course creators, coaches, consultants, and membership site owners. And I'll see you in the next video.